guys that are here are motivated, they've worked hard, I think they have a good tactical game plan. You know, it's just about a bunch of people in the stadium and those guys playing up to their potential. You gave us an update on Christian last week. Is it still the plan to feature him? Yep. He would be involved in the game. Any, what, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, what what level, or What I don't know if you can put a percentage on it, but how close is he to being? Again, that injury is not like a pulled muscle or a sprained ankle. You know, it's pain tolerant. They release whatever they release in there to get the athletic neuralgia to settle down. It's just his pain tolerance. So he'll take a bunch of drugs before the game. And, We'll roll him out there and we'll see what we get. I'm putting his pace in a game like this, just getting up and down the pitch. And we always talked about transition. Well, obviously, we're missing Jordan, so that hurts. But Will, willing runner, uh, you know, we'll get some young guys on the field and Josh on the deeper line. We'll, 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 we'll figure some stuff out. When you're putting together a lineup for this one, and I don't know, do you. Do you put any weight on uh, veterans versus younger guys in terms of like a holistic approach, or is it just I got to put out the best lineup that gives us the best chance to win this one game? Well, sometimes those two run concurrent. <clears throat> sometimes they're at odds with each other. Uh, it is an interesting dynamic. Coaches can go, you know, and young players win games, experienced players win championships. I've heard that before. <clears throat> um, I think we've had one championship with young guys in there. Uh, what is my preference, my style? I'm you know, probably a little more conservative than most. I like young guys get experience. But, you know, we started a 16-year-old kid in a bunch of games this year and won a championship with a 16-year-old kid on the field. So it's more about the level of players, their fitness level, their mental acumen way the pieces fit together. That was probably the, you know, the challenging thing here for us, missing you know, a lot of guys. How do we get the 4 2 3 one? How do we how do we make that happen? Who's in the best spot for the that particular position? Cincinnati's uh, had a big game last week. Uh, did, did you watch that and thoughts on, on their team coming in? What did you, was he someone that struck you as a, as a coach, uh, as an aspiring coach? Uh, yeah, sort of at the time. I mean, he was pretty quiet. He let his actions speak on the field. Good in, in and around the penalty box. He was always through it. Um, you know, I can see it. Some work with him in a coaching course. I mean, he, he's, you know, look, consistency in this league is one thing. You can have a you know, good year and then fall off the face of the earth. Um, you know, consistency in this league is paramount. So let's see how his second and third years go with their bump up. I always thought that was a level-headed guy. Uh, always enjoyed my conversations with him. And you know, managing people is certainly one of the key components of being a head coach. So I think he'll check all those boxes. And just on the consistencies, that, how much do you tell the young guys just to, to be consistent in their play and continue to improve? Well, they need to be consistent in their technical ability under pressure, but what I need them to do is, you know, play with energy and enthusiasm. You know, the kids, you know, Danny and Josh, you know, they've done well. Ethan comes on the field, and, you know, Tevez and those guys come on the field. I mean, they need to bring the energy and the consistency. Young players fail. They're, they're good. They're energetic. They run. They're fit. They're hungry. But then their technical ability or their decision making lets them down. So that's what we talk about. Uh, all this about their great creativity. Is that part of it? Well, we got to rely on Freddie, on Albert. I mean, a lot of that has to come from them. I mean, those two guys can help us unlock Cincinnati.
Uh, last night to come to finals, big comeback win and win in penalty kicks. Uh, thoughts on, on that that win in advancing the West Final? Number one, congratulations to Wade and all his staff. Congratulations to AOC and some of the kids that flowed up and down between the two teams. I know a lot of our guys were there watching that game. But probably the most important thing for me was that the culture of the club about winning and never quitting was on full display last night. Because those kids never quit. Even when you know, Marlon missed that second penalty, you know, and the air could have come out. No, they went right back down and attacked and you know, got another goal. They figured out a way how to get themselves back in the game. So I, I loved it. Great. Is that instilling a culture across different levels of the club? Is that something that you even talk about, or is it just something that's in the blood of people around, like from Wade to you, you know, leading both clubs? Oh, you can't give Wade and I all the credit. It has to go to everyone in the organization. I think, I think this club having a winning tradition from way back when, seventies and eighties, helped the USL and the Indians. It's helped that whole thing, all those fifty years. Of Different but similar, uh, Reed Baker Whiting is with the U19s yeah. right now. He yeah. scored a goal in that yeah. first game. He's been playing, I guess, as a full, a fullback for him or a wingback. Something I sure. didn't see, but you know, he's getting on the field. There again, I mean, when I was young, everybody can tell you, Frecky over there, everybody, we, didn't, we, didn't, we just wanted to be on the field. So maybe that sparks Reed's performance. Let's see.